What would shock someone the most time jumping from 1980 to today? Story 1. How the hell are people suggesting 80s time jumpers would be amazed at our tech? Bullshit. They envisaged a future of gleaming cities and flying cars, remember? They will most likely be shocked at how things haven't changed all that much. And actually, most things are shit. Story 2. Go watch some random street video from the 80s. What would shock those people today is how incredibly fat we've all gotten. Consider, in 1990, no U.S. state had more than 20% of its population obese. Today, every state does. Story 3, for me, it would be cars. In 1980, I desperately wanted a Ferrari like Magnum P.I. Crazy performance. Today, I own a family sedan that cost me $1.30K and outperforms the Ferrari 308. Edit. I also own a motorcycle with more HP from a smaller engine than the car I drove in 1980. Story 4. Wait, are you telling me the Baltimore Colts moved to Indianapolis and kept the same name? Then the Browns left Cleveland to Baltimore and changed their name. Then Cleveland got another Browns team. And they still have been to a Super Bowl. And the Cardinals left St. Louis. Then the Rams went to St. Louis. Then the Raiders left L.A. Then the Rams went back to L.A. And the Chargers also went to L.A. And the Raiders went to Las Vegas. WTF is going on in the NFL? Story 5. Guys, this is 2024, 2024. This date sounded like sci-fi to people from the ADS. They would not be shocked by technology because they would expect even more technological wonders than we even have. There are analogs to smartphones and the internet in many pieces of fiction that were popular back then. I think they would be shocked by how little has really changed. Also, I think they would be shocked that it's not trivial to go into space yet. Story 6. We went from dragging a 50 phone cord around from a phone plugged into the wall to walking around with one in our pocket 24-7, and being able to take pictures, text, and access the internet to find out just about anything we want to know. Not to mention everything else a phone does today. All that in 45 years, just imagine 45 more from now. Story 7. As someone who was alive in 1980, the number of really old people. Nobody lived past like 76, 78 back in those days. You didn't see 80-year-olds running for office or being prez of a company. They were pushing up daisies. Story 8. The ability to know almost anything in an instant. Basically, the whole of human knowledge is available to us immediately on little devices we carry in our pockets. In 1980, you had to go to your school or local library to get information. And even then, what they had was limited. Maybe someone you know has the answer. But are they correct? Maybe a university library nearby? Write a letter to an expert. For many things... Say the contents of rare manuscripts, there was only one place in the world that knowledge was held. Either way, answering a question took time, and sometimes it was never answered. Story 9. Nearly everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket. This device gives us instant access to the entire scope of human knowledge. We use these devices primarily to argue with strangers and look at pictures of cats. Story 10. You have a Walkman. You have all the music you want. You have all the movies you want. You have freaking free porn. You have almost all the knowledge of the history of the world. You have a freaking flashlight. You have a mother freaking map. You have a camera, radio, video camera on a single device that fits in your pocket with its own power source. Story 11, weed legal everywhere. We expected great jumps in technology and whatnot, but trust me as someone born in the 70s who lived through the 80s propaganda, nobody ever thought marijuana prohibition would end. That same teacher who was hosting D.A.R.E. seminars and handing out those little eagle trophies for completing the program in the 80s now owns a dispensary in Illinois. Story 12. Smoking being almost non-existent, though replaced by electronic smoking and marijuana. It's hard to convey to people who weren't there, pre-2000 smoking was everywhere. The most restrictive many people were about smoking was yelling at mom for falling asleep smoking or debating how much they could smoke while pregnant. The internet? Eh, computers were coming. If you stretched your mind a bit, you could see the future of it. Nobody would see the collapse of cigarette smoking. I remember vending machines located outside of the bathroom of restaurants that any kid with a few quarters and an iron backside could sneak into. There were ashtrays built into hotel nightstands and ashtrays were given as gifts, routinely, even to non-smokers. Non-smoking sections were literally separated by a three-high dividing wall from the smoking section. There were candy cigarettes for kids. Story 13. O.J. Simpson was charged with two murders, was the defendant in the trial of the century, was acquitted in an extremely controversial trial, 
was held responsible for two wrongful deaths and later went to prison for a series of other felonies. Story 14. Hmm, hard question. I think the biggest shocks would be 1. Mobile phones. They were rare as hell in the 1980s, and unless you worked for Wall Street or a top 100 company, you'd be pretty much out of luck. 2. TVs. They'd be absolutely in awe of the flat screens, not only in the size but also the weight. Rarely see any half-ton old-fashioned TVs these days. Story 15. Everyone is commenting about tech, but as someone who was a teen and young 20s in the ADS, immediately thought, how F asterisk 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 G conservative and backward we've become. In the 80s, we could go get contraceptives that we learned about in school from either Planned Parenthood or the local health department. Abortion wasn't easy, but it was accessible. Trust me, there were group funds for girls who needed one with phone trees because no internet. Before HIV became a thing, STDs were something that you just went and took the antibiotics for and hunted down all of the people you had sex with, which was fun. Herpes wasn't huge, but the 80s made it become huge because we were out there like rabbits. Now we don't teach kids about sexual health because OMG, they might have sex. They are going to have sex like every teenager ever. Birth control and abortion are throttled because OMG cells merging. Oh, I also would be shocked at the living wage I was paid. I am not paid a living wage now, even as a highly skilled person in my field. I now slog along and hope I don't end up having to live in a multi-generational household because we are all just so of hash key act. Story 16. Shock is an interesting word to choose. Many things would be impressive, and several things would be heartbreaking. Indeed, many of both would surely be shocking. Let's start with the recent. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was only a few years old in 1980. Its collapse could shock someone to see happen in the year 2024 being as a similar thing had just happened in Tampa in May of 1980. After 40 years, this sort of thing can still happen? Of course, the pilot of the ship that struck the Skyway was drunk. We know not what caused the recent failure, other than the ship's losing power. God bless those poor families, by the way. No one should ever have to go to work and die like that. 1980 was quite long ago, and a lot of modern events hadn't yet occurred. The assassination attempt against Ronald Reagan would be a bit jarring to learn about, but the individual would probably be relieved and impressed by the president's survival. With 1980 predating his inauguration, the person might not even know who Reagan is. Thus, they'd be missed as to why his second term would have been won by that classically referred to landslide. They'd be quite intrigued by this, as well as all the subsequent doings of American politics. They may or may not recall Senator Joe Biden from their own time, although they really should. It would be one thing for this person to realize they had left prior to the inauguration of Ronald Reagan, who to them would have been the oldest serving president. More surprising, perhaps pleasantly so after a few seconds, might be that our current president is even older. Reagan would have taken office at 69, becoming the oldest president to serve. He would leave at 78, which is about the same age at which Joe Biden would take office. This might indicate to the time-traveling subject that human longevity has been improved. A person in 1980 would receive nearly all of her visual reporting through the television. I think the obsolescence of traditional TV would be a bit jarring until the person could grapple with its replacement, social media and smartphones. In other words, a huge majority of news, events caught on camera, as it were, being shot by regular people. This omnipresence and ubiquitous television replacement could be shocking in that everyone, including our subject, would have the ability to record and even broadcast live video at any moment, wherever they stood or sat. Moreover, a mobile phone would have been a multi-thousand dollar investment in 1980. But the cost of owning one today is perhaps not even $100 at any given time. The phones cost one or two grand, but nobody has to pay full price for the phone. Confusing also might be the remaining unhindered ability of organized media to be deceptive. However, this wouldn't likely occur to our subject right away. They would still be accustomed to seeing their news delivered in accordance with 1949's Fairness Doctrine, which wasn't repealed until 1987. Thus, the advent of opinionated news and dedicated channels to opposing viewpoints as we see today would probably be mind-boggling and even appear as unprofessional to an adult mind jumping in from the year 1980. Even a movie like Robocop, which while not as old as 1980, still possesses satirical views that would be understood by a person from 1980, 
presenting as dystopian a view of news as it does, still fails to capture just how lopsided the American media is today. This person would have to choose which network to watch based on their own preconceived opinion, more so than based upon which particular station happened to be airing news at the moment. This leads us to another important note. 1980 would be the year of the founding of CNN, and CNN was the very first channel to broadcast news 24 sevenths. Thus, there wasn't even anything like it that the person could relate to, depending on specifically when in the year 1980 they'd left for 2024. News would be completely different on top of completely changed to them. The radio has changed in that most people don't seem to use it to listen to music anymore, save for people at work or riding in work trucks, etc. News can be interspersed throughout the entertainment offered on a radio station, but in 2024, we tend to enjoy our music through our phones in the form of subscriptions such as with Spotify, thus satellite. Again, our subject is entirely space literate and expects satellites to be in use, but I believe the extent to which it enables our communications and entertainment could prove to be overstimulating and downright wild. Additionally, the lack of a need for physical media could make a person feel almost naked inside a modern car. Eight track aside, the modern audio cassette deck would be an ominous omission from the interior. Interestingly, the person would have missed the compact disc entirely, which was first produced in 1982, although someone in the loop might have been aware of the research that would go into it. The Laserdisc was a brand new invention as of 1978, and that reasoning wouldn't be missed by everyone. However, cars today rarely come with a CD player and never with a cassette deck. Thus, my case in point, music is now weightless and takes up no space at all in one sense of conveying the meaning. Another sense of conveying it might be that the ability to select any artist or song, play it, then continue playing similar music without human interference at all, without even ejecting and turning over a cassette or record, or even pushing a button to go from Stevie Wonder to Juice World, would be magical. Speaking of which, the prevalence of hip-hop and its underlying use in nearly all new music would also be interesting and thrilling. Moreover, to a person from 1980, Michael Jackson wouldn't have even made his impact on music yet. Thriller wasn't released until 1982. It's beginning to look more and more like our subject might have enjoyed themselves better if they had simply stayed in the year 1980. All of what it is about music that shocks someone from 1980 today is due in massive part to the music of the 1980s. Again, harping on the person's cosmological awareness, the images we have today from both the James Webb and its predecessor Hubble, telescopes have produced imagery that would floor a person from 1980, herself being accustomed to those already grainy images, let alone the fact that she'd have seen them further reduced by television broadcast limitations. Seeing the images in print, instead of on television, would have been the best way to appreciate their splendor. Today, she would be able to see them on a computer LCD, at their native resolution. And on the same computer, she would have access to software with which she could, if she were so inclined false color the images herself, Adobe. Speaking of which, the overall flatness of the computer screens would be truly a step into the future. The cathode ray tube is simply gone from consumer electronics today, and the productivity, detail, and comfort this enables would make it almost impossible for her to go back to CRT displays. I know at least a few of you have probably bought that vintage computer you'd think would be so nostalgic to use only to quickly shut it off and source the nearest available vizine. Video games, operating system interfaces, and the lengths to which even the average person is now computer literate are all aspects of the change that we could spend an entire editorial discussing. However, computers wouldn't necessarily be a shock in and of themselves. A few things on this, without spending too much time on it. Microsoft Windows would be amazing to a person previously accustomed to the raw interfaces used in the late 70s and early 80s. Applications for computer systems then were limited to databases tailored to a respective industry, including most notably the financial sector, insurance companies, well-funded law enforcement jurisdictions, and the car sales industry, among others such as early CAD. Word and Excel didn't exist. In fact, word processors in general wouldn't be widespread until after 1980, although they had definitely been around since tilde 1975. They would have required the most expensive computers, but an author from the time period certainly might have had one. 
Most likely, our friend from 1980 would have simply used a typewriter, which cost a fifth, or maybe a bit less than half, of what a computer would. Modern internet, then mostly limited to government usage and the financial sector in a specialized and non-global sense, could keep our friend very busy as she discovered the sum of all human knowledge and her access to it. Without the need for a library, a phone call, or the use of indexing, think of a wall of little drawers filled with literal index cards, this would have been the thing in 1980 that search engines would equate to now. Video surveillance and the law's omnipresence for the purposes of evidence gathering, prosecution, and even civil cases involving traffic disputes would offer a whole new world of convenience where courts are concerned. Not surprising at all, however, would be the need to still show up in front of a judge. Some things never change, unless a disease breaks out. Story 17. The Incredible Multiplicity of Media Content In 1980, most people had three, five TV channels available to them. This created a lot more unity in our cultural experience. If, say, CBS had a TV movie on Monday night, at least a third of the people you talked to at work the next day watched that movie. Because there were only three or four to choose from. We were all watching the same content, all the time. The other thing is that we have way more options for products now. For example, when I was growing up in the 70s there, about four kinds of toothpaste. Colgate, Crest, Aquafresh, and something called Gleam. That was IT. Now in the toothpaste aisle, there are at least four different kinds of Colgate six or seven variations of Crest, and dozens of other brands. We're drowning in options. Story 18. My mother passed early right before tech boom slash internet bubble. She loved tech. She'd be shocked about everything. I'd tell her, no, we don't use dial-up to connect to the internet. No, you don't have to sit at home all day to wait for me to call. Your phone has a camera. It can hold thousands of pics. I can see your face on FaceTime or Zoom. There's like apps for everything. And no, you don't have to go to a traveler's agent to buy an airplane ticket. We can interact with people from all over the world on social media. You don't have to fax me or email me. You can just text me. You don't have to print out directions. You can use Google Maps. Also, there was a deadly virus and we couldn't go outside. We had to stay in for a bit and work from home. Story 19. I was a kid in the 80s and remember my family going to the beach with my uncle and his family. We had separate cars, and my dad had somewhere acquired a CB radio, and I remember being just absolutely astounded by the fact that we were talking to each other, from different cars, while driving down the highway. Smartphones would absolutely blow our minds. Story 20. Haha, ha, many things. First off, smartphones are everywhere, like in everyone's hands. Secondly, we've got this thing called the internet. It's like a global brain. Third, electric cars are legit cruising the streets. Lastly, people are wearing computers on their wrists calling them smartwatches. Welcome to the future, man. Story 21. Truthfully, it's probably inflation. The internet had been talked about in the late 70s, as well as fancy space cars and computers we can take with us, our cell phones. Technology was the talking point of the future, and the 80s revolved around futuristic sci-fi movies. All that to be expected. What would be a shocker would be to tell someone the house they bought for five zero 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 dollars In a janky neighborhood, is now worth $2 million. Gas prices are 5.60 a gallon, and a month's supply of groceries for three people is over $600. I think they'd want to time travel back to 1980 after hearing that. Story 22. Smartphones. In 1980, the closest thing to a smartphone would be the car phone, and they were stupidly expensive. Not only that, but computers were a niche product mostly used for work purposes and by a minority of hobbyists. The combination of the two, along with a high-resolution LCD screen into a portable device carried by almost everyone, would be mind-blowing for someone from 1980. That would be even before they actually used the device and found out how powerful it is and the features that it has. For example, Siri Google Assistant, GPS-enabled maps, real-time translation, games, etc. Story 23. The technology would be awesome, but I think the biggest shocker would be that a man who spews tons of crazy gibberish bullshit, paints his face orange on purpose, and wears a nasty massive poof of a comb-over was our president once, lost, and is now running again. It still shocks me, and I watched it happen.